The woman who came to be known as Helen of Troy was actually born Helen of Sparta. She was the daughter of Zeus, the king of the gods, and Leda, a mortal woman and the wife of the Spartan king Tyndareus. Helen's siblings included the heroic twins Castor and Polydeuces, also known as the Dioscuri, and the murderous Clytemnestra. Helen quickly became known as the most beautiful woman in the world. She had so many suitors that her foster father Tyndareus feared a war would erupt over her hand. Sure enough, when Helen left her Greek husband Menelaus for the handsome Trojan prince Paris, war did break out. The Greeks fought the Trojans for ten long years to get Helen back. Ever since antiquity, poets, readers, and scholars have offered contradictory interpretations of Helen. Some have seen her as haughty and vain, others as romantic and long-suffering. There were even versions of the myth in which Helen remained loyal to Menelaus and did not sail to Troy at all. Even today, few characters from Greek mythology capture the imagination as much as the perpetually ambiguous Helen of Troy. In the most familiar tradition, Helen was born after Zeus, the ruler of the Greek gods, seduced Leda, the wife of King Tyndareus of Sparta. As part of this seduction, Zeus transformed himself into a swan. When an eagle began to chase him, he flew to Leda for refuge. He then slept with Leda, still in the form of a swan, and departed leaving the Queen of Sparta pregnant. From here, the story gets even stranger. After sleeping with Zeus, Leda also slept with her husband Tyndareus and became pregnant by him, too. When it came time for her to give birth, Leda laid an egg, or two, in some traditions, from which emerged not only Helen but also Clytemnestra, Castor, and Polydeuces. Most sources made Helen and Polydeuces the children of Zeus, and Clytemstra and Castor the children of Tyndareus. In another tradition, Helen was the daughter not of Zeus and Leda but of Zeus and Nemesis. Usually described as the daughter of the primordial deity Nyx, Nemesis was the divine embodiment of retribution. In trying to flee Zeus' advances, Nemesis transformed herself into various animals, the last of which was a goose. Zeus in turn transformed himself into a goose or a swan, there are different versions, and raped her. Nemesis subsequently became pregnant and laid an egg, which came into Leda's possession. When Helen hatched from it, she was raised by Leda and Tyndareus as though she were their own daughter. Helen is a famous female figure in Greek mythology for her involvement in the Trojan War. Helen was made the scapegoat and blamed for the Ten-Year War. The question of Helen's involvement in the Trojan War certainly raises difficult questions, and has since the time of Homer. The legend of Troy is one of the oldest stories ever told. It reached a new audience in Wolfgang Peterson's 2004 Hollywood epic Troy. The film, a loose adaptation of Homer's ancient Greek poem, The Iliad, covers the major events of the Trojan War. It's a tale filled with heroic warriors like Achilles, Hector, and Patroclus, they are rewarded for their prowess with eternal glory. Homer's apt term is, Cleos. But not everyone deserves this kind of eternal fame. Near the beginning of the story, the Trojan prince Paris falls in love with the Spartan queen Helen, who is married to King Menelaus. That's where the story begins. The pair fled to Troy, where they were greeted with caution by the ruler of Troy, Priam. As the plot unfolds, 
Helen's presence remains elusive in Troy, as various Greek kingdoms come to demand her return to Menelaus. The outcome of her affair with Paris is hardly in question, a ten-year war and the destruction of Troy. The question of Helen's involvement in a significant conflict certainly raises difficult questions. This has been the case since Homer's time. Homer offers his audience, the poem would have been performed orally. No easy explanation for why the Greeks were willing to participate in such a protracted conflict. Although Helen repeatedly acknowledges her role in inciting the conflict, other characters, such as Priam, refuse to take the blame. The Greek gods are blamed for the great conflict, and the Trojan prince Paris is also held responsible. In later Greek history, various writers have addressed the question of Helen's role in the war in different ways. In some parts of Greece, she was worshipped as a goddess. It is true that early stories are very vague, but the poet Stesichorus, who lived around 600 BC, is said to have slandered Helen and was blinded after doing so. The story goes that he regained his sight after he denied that Helen had ever been to Troy. Instead, he colorfully claimed that it was Helen's ghost who had eloped there. Some 150 years later, the so-called father of history, Herodotus of Halicarnassus, also highlighted the strange role Helen played in the Trojan War. He cited a Persian informant to underline the tenuousness of the claims in Greek mythology and to point out that it was unusual for a great empire at the time to choose to lose a woman. According to this source, the people of Asia did not mind the loss of a woman. But the Greeks, for her sake, recruited a large army, then came to Asia and destroyed Priam's power. Beyond the time of Greek mythology, many have continued to struggle with the enigmatic Helen. She reappears, for example, on the Elizabethan stage in Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus, 1604, and in Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida, circa 1602, she is imagined as a vapid fool, who is solely responsible for the loss of Greek life. As these cases illustrate, Helen's unsavory status as a warmonger colored much of the later reception of Homer's story. Dante Gabriel Rossetti's 1863 painting, Helen of Troy, is another striking example of this. In many ways, the painting focuses on depicting Helen as a mortal being of extraordinary beauty. Her hair is golden, and she is dressed in elaborately decorated clothing. However, upon closer inspection, one notices that Helen has a purple left cheek. Could this be an indication of an abusive relationship with her new Trojan husband, Paris? Is Rossetti suggesting that Paris beat his new bride? However, Helen is also depicted in front of a flaming city, pointing to a pendant depicting a flaming torch. She seems to be saying that she is responsible for this great conflagration. It's worth noting that Helen wasn't always seen as a guilty and destructive figure. Take Derek Walcott's Caribbean Helen in his 1990 poem, Ameros, a radical rereading of Homer's text, which offers a fresh perspective on this iconic female figure. As depicted in the film Troy, the narrative of the Greek mythological Trojan War still tends to center on Helen and her passionate love affair with Paris. This, of course, fits into a broader historical picture in which women and their bodies have been used as figures to explore issues such as warfare, violence, and temptation. This has been the case throughout history, from medieval witches being blamed and burned for corrupting society, to the recent debate over the Burkini ban in France. 
Indeed, the latter is just another example of society continuing to police women's bodies and perpetuate harsh stereotypes of the oppressed woman. In Sparta, Helen had two important temples. One was in the area known as Platonistas, south of the main town and close to the banks of the Eurotas, the river that ran by Sparta. The second temple was on the opposite bank of the Eurotas, in Therapne. Helen's shrine at Therapne, called the Menelion, is perhaps the better known of the two. It was there that Helen and Menelaus were believed to have been buried after they died. The Menelion at Therapne was thus regarded as a very ancient and important cult site of Helen of Troy. In one story, told by the historian Herodotus, the third wife of the Spartan king Ariston was transformed from remarkably ugly to remarkably beautiful through Helen's intervention at Therapne. In Athens, Helen seems to have been worshipped in connection with her brothers, Castor and Polydeuces, the Dioscuri, in Rhodes, there was a sanctuary dedicated to Helen Dendritus, Helen of the Tree. It was said that the sanctuary was built after Polyxo had Helen murdered in Rhodes. <laughs>